Good morning, Frontline. It is good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. Man, we just wanted to start off this service with some celebration. So if you're in the worship center or if you're here in person, come on into the worship center. And if you're online, thank you for just joining us. We love you. We're excited that you're joining us virtually this morning. And many of you were here last week for our Easter services. We wanted to celebrate that 61 people gave their lives to Jesus last week. So let's celebrate that. God is good. And I just wanna draw attention to the fact that 15 of those 61 people were kids over in our children's ministry area. And that is so beautiful that the Lord is just capturing their hearts at a young age. And if you don't know, we partner with a ministry in Ukro, Ethiopia called Children's Hope Chest. And a lot of you sponsor kids from over there. And we found out a couple weeks ago that eight of those kids, eight of those sponsored kids gave their lives to Jesus. And so God is just on the move. He is working, that's something to celebrate. Um, we just wanna celebrate together. So would you stand and we're gonna worship God. But um, if you could scoot in towards the center of your sections because there's still people coming in, we wanna have room for them to all worship together. So I think we all know this song. Let's sing the chorus together. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, amen? I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are. Let's sing this together. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress. Sing it to him. You are my portion, and you are my hiding place. I believe, I believe you are. mercies are new for us every day. So we just need to praise him for that this morning. So sing with me. It's a new horizon. It's a new horizon. And I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long when I it's a new horizon and i'm set on you and you will be here today with mercies that are new all my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when i
I just love that reminder that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for us. And He truly is the only way that we can have life eternal with our Father. And it's not by anything that we have done or will do. And thank God for that, right? <laughs> but it is by His perfect sacrifice. And so with that wonderful victory that He has over death, we have this blessed assurance, this unshakable certainty that we'll see victory too. And I don't know about you, but I think he deserves some praise for that this morning, amen? Yeah. Amen. So will you join us as we continue worshiping? Then Christ said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. What beautiful assurance we have as we trust in Christ Jesus. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. in his blood perfect submission
life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting in Him. For our guilty consciences have been washed with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. And so let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep His promise. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. What I think is so beautiful about that song is it strips back so much. It takes away all the big words we use to describe God, 
everything we like to ascribe to him, it strips all of that back down to one simple word. Holy, holy, holy. And it's not just a word, that is a lens through which everything that he does can be perceived, that our whole lives can be looked at through, that at the end of the day, no matter what, God is holy, holy, holy. So I would just like to continue that into a moment of surrender, just as we sang earlier about surrendering joyfully to him. So I would invite you all to close your eyes and bow your heads with me. And I'm gonna read a passage of scripture over us. And I would just like to invite you to take this however you will. Whatever God is speaking to you now, whatever he wants to say, let him say it. This is Psalm 46, nine through 11. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I would just like to continue this into a time of prayer. So we can go ahead now and just whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, just talk to God about that. Whatever it is, just pray to him now as I pray. God, we just thank you first and foremost that you are holy. Before everything else that you do, everything else that you are, you are holy and we lift that up to you and thanks God. And we just surrender for you right now, joyfully. This isn't something that we have to make ourselves do. God, we want to surrender to you. So God, I just pray that you would move in all of us, that you would open our hearts today, that you would open our ears to hear what you have to say. It's in your name that all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, Frontline. My name is Alex. I have the privilege of being the middle school director here on staff, and I just have a couple of invitations that I would like to extend to you guys. The first of which is for our newcomer's lunch. So if you are new to Frontline or you've been coming a little while but haven't really gotten plugged in yet, this is the next step for you to go to. The reason for that being, uh, this is not just a place for you to hear about our church and the stuff we do. This is a place for you to connect with other people that are children of God. First and foremost, it's a place for you to just talk to other people, hear their stories, and connect with them in really powerful ways. And if you have just become a Christian, the next step for you is baptism. So what that is, is it's literally just an outward expression of something that happens inside of you. It's you being a Christian and telling the whole world, hey, I want you all to know it too. So if you've just become a Christian, this is the next step for you. And if you are interested, you can visit frontlinegr.com slash baptism to learn more about that. So we would love to have you there for that as well. And now I would just like to invite you in our time of giving. And this is the next step for all Christians. This is a command that Jesus sets forth, not to just give money, but to continue, like I keep saying, that moment of surrender. This is just giving back a portion of what he's gifted us with. No matter how much that is, we are called to give, just out of a posture of surrender and saying, God, I trust you and you've gifted me, so I want to give back to you. And now we're gonna head into a new series this month called Lord, Teach Us How to Pray. The first week will be brought by David this week, so you can go ahead and check out this video behind me on the screen to see what it's about. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory forever. Amen.
Well, hey, good morning, Frontline. It's just good to see all of you. It's good to be with you to worship together post-Easter. Hope you had an awesome week, awesome weather. It's just good. I'm excited to dive in. Uh, to the brand new series that Alex was just talking about. It, it's called Lord Teach Us to Pray. But before I get into that, I just I want to ask you this question. Uh, is there anything amazing in your life or spectacular or awesome or wonderful, maybe something you've dreamed of for forever that you see right now, but you see it so often and so regularly, it kind of lost that like pizzazz like it lost the wow factor, the thing that just, it was incredible before, but now that you see it all the time, day in, day out, maybe it's a person, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a house that you had your eye on, maybe, maybe it's a job. I, I think even, I have two young boys, four and one, and, and they love all things big, right? All, all things big, so trucks, excavators, I mean, construction equipment, they, anything big with big wheels, big tires, big engines, that's, that's what they love. So imagine how overwhelmed and excited they were when I took them to the local fire department a couple weeks ago. I mean, here, here's a picture walking in. Like, like these kids were in heaven. I mean, it's the only time they had ever seen something this big, this wonderful, this magnificent, like a fire truck was actually on TV. Right, we watch Blippy. I don't know if you parents, right, if you can empathize with me for Blippy, right? We endure. If you're older, you're like, Blippy, just consider it a gift from God that you don't know what that is. <laughs> but we've endured, we've lived through it. And so they've seen fire trucks and firehouses and all that. So we brought the boys, and, it, and here's what's funny they walk in. This is Jordan, this is my one year old. They walk in. I mean, look at the size difference here. They, they walked in, they were so timid shy. I mean, if you know my boys, they're not timid or shy. They're not quiet. Uh, they come in, they're so quiet. They're holding the hands. They're staying close. And I, I'm saying to a bunch of the firefighters, like, it, they'll warm up. They'll warm up. Well, they, they did warm up. Uh, there's a slide. Judah took a liking uh, to one of the firefighters named Abby. Uh, Judah knew the way to get to the top to go down the slide, but he kept asking Abby. You know what I'm saying? Four years old, he's picking up and he goes, Abby, can you show me where the slide is again? And she looks at him. She's, you know, vacuuming at the time. And she goes, Judah, I'm pretty sure you know how to do it, but sure, I'll take you again. And as they're walking up the stairs, Judah's wearing his firefighter outfit. You can go to this next photo. He's wearing his firefighter outfit. It says fire chief on the back. He's got the hat. I mean, he's everything. And he's walking with Abby, and he looks at her, and he says, Abby, don't worry. It's just a costume. <laughs> Gag, right? I'm like, Whatever. It's funny how comfortable they got the longer that we were there. I mean, they, they just they got to sit in the trucks and try out the equipment. I mean, they got to see all the different types. They were upstairs. They were in the, I don't know, in the kitchen and watching TV and eating popcorn. I mean, it, it made their life. But here's the thing that was funny that I was picking up on is a lot of the firefighters there, this, this was another day on the job. And I'm sure a lot of them dreamed of this, looked forward to this. You know, it's like, this is what I've worked for and desired. But I think sometimes when you see something over and over and over on a regular basis, you kind of lose some of the excitement that maybe somebody new or somebody younger or somebody that's experiencing it just for the first time, they have a totally different perspective. We all have that. We all have that. Maybe it's at work. Maybe it's in life. Maybe it's in relationships. Uh, but I, I also think sometimes that happens with God. Whether we realize it or not, whether we try to or not, and the reason we're, we're stepping into prayer is because I think a lot of times prayer, maybe early on you might feel intimidated, overwhelmed, nervous, anxious, like how do I do this? How do I do this right? How do I talk to God? I mean, is it like calling a friend? Like, is there a number you're supposed to dial in a certain way you're supposed to ask for things to get things? I, I think early on you have like a timidity or an anxiousness of like, how, how do I actually do this well? But I also think there's another side of the spectrum that says when I've followed Jesus for a long time, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, whatever it is for you. When you've followed Jesus for a long time, sometimes prayer has the ability to lose some of its pizzazz. Some of it's wow. Some of it's amazing. Part of it is why we want to jump into this series because that, that's not what prayer is meant to be. God's actually given us access to himself in an extraordinary way, and we get to, to relate to him through prayer. So we're, wherever you're at on the spectrum right now, if you're excited about this series or if you're like, bummer, I was not looking forward to this series or anything in between, I actually think this is going to be a gift to you. Uh, prayer is the number one focus of our church. 
right now, just in the foreseeable future. It's the thing that we're moving towards and the thing that we're desiring. And it's because when God shows up, when we have a a connection and a relationship with him, it changes everything else. And so what my hope is for you, what my prayer is for you is that as you dive into the series, you would have an open mind as to maybe what God wants to do in you and in your life and in your relationship with him to, to maybe uncap or open up a different way of talking and listening and relating to God that very well could change every part of your life from this day forward. So I, I hope you'll lean in. I hope you'll, you'll enjoy this series as I've enjoyed this series already, just the preparation part of it. But we're going to dive in. Jesus' disciples, when they followed Jesus, uh, for three years, three and a half years, they walked with him. There was a question that they asked him one day, and it tells you what they saw, kind of their perception of Jesus. One day, they, they said, Jesus, will you teach us how to pray like you pray? I, I love that question, right? It comes across so humbly. Like, Jesus, can you just teach us how to do what you do? These disciples knew how to pray. Most, most of them grew up like in the Jewish synagogues. I mean, they, they were there. They regularly participated in weekly gatherings. They knew their prayers. They were often recited. They were formulaic. You say this, you quote this, you start here, you end here. And it's usually around the same time or same time of day, same time of week. They, they were used to prayer. They knew how to pray. A lot of you, you would go, I know how to pray. Done that, next question. But this, the disciples, when they looked at Jesus, they said, you pray different. Like when you talk to God, when you relate to God, when, when we see you in your heavenly Father, it's different. Jesus, can you teach us how to pray like you pray? Can you actually teach us how to do what you do? And Jesus, right, you can imagine him smiling. Like, I'm so glad you asked. Jesus, here's how he responds. He says this. Uh, He says, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you have a certain type of Bible... Sometimes it includes one more line, and it says, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Different translation. The reason it's not in is because it was uh, discovered in a later manuscript than the most original one. So they exclude it if you're wondering, why? Why is that not in? Here, Jesus walks them through, the, I mean, the, the crux, the, the meat of the entire prayer is right here. Anybody else, like, blew my mind. That prayer changed my life. I had no idea. I can imagine the disciples saying this. That's it? Like, I feel like we can do that. Like, that's all, is that all you say? You just say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again? I think Jesus packed so much into this short passage, this short prayer, that it's enough for us to unpack for the next couple weeks. And today, so here's what I want to tell you. We're not going to unpack this entire prayer. We're going to do it over the next couple weeks. Today, the only thing we're going to unpack together is this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's it. So if you're a note taker, if you're a a reader, if you want to come back, the, the only thing we're going to focus on today is our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So let's start. Our Father, our Father in heaven. Jesus starts off by saying something that would have been picked up on immediately by all of his disciples. Jesus said, our Father. Throughout the Bible, God is referred to as Father over and over and over and over again. Here's a couple passages I'll read for you quick. They're not going to be on the screen, but Jeremiah 3.19 says this, I thought you would call me Father and not turn away from following me. Deuteronomy 32.6, Is he not your Father, your Creator, who made and formed you? Malachi 2.10, Have we not all one Father? Has not God created us? Psalm 103, 13, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The disciples would have memorized a bunch of those passages. They would have known that God identifies and, and shares himself as a father. So, But for Jesus to say, our father, the two words that jump out, first one is this, our. I know you're going to be like, David, seriously, are we going to go word by word by word? We will if we need to. 
our starts with us. It's every nation, every tribe throughout all the world, every race, every age, every job, every socioeconomic class. God is our Father. I I think sometimes where we make a mistake, and this is only the first word, right? I think sometimes when we make a mistake is we say, "God, God, you're just mine. Therefore, you must look like me, think like me, operate like me, talk like me. Jesus says, our Father. The word father, the, the word that's used in Greek is pater. Uh, it's where we get paternity. So pater, it's significant because the actual definition of it says this, one who imparts life and is committed to it. It's a significant word, father. When Jesus uses the word father to describe his heavenly father, when he's saying, this is how you pray, it's like, I want you to understand who you're talking to. He, he's a father. He's one who who gives life, life that you have, the air that you breathe, the breath in your lungs, the dreams that you have for your future, the relationships that you have, the things that give you joy and energy and passion, those come from God. God created those. He created you. God, as a father, imparts life, and he is committed to life. Jesus is saying to his disciples, this is not about a formula. It's not a process. It's not say the right words in the right order, and if you get it correct, then God grants your wish like a genie. Jesus is saying, when you approach God, I want you to approach him like he's your father. The time out. Not all of us have good thoughts when we think of father, do we? A lot of us, our relationship with fathers is absentee fathers, abusive fathers, critical fathers, harsh fathers, uh, fathers that, that kind of just floated through or didn't add a lot to our lives even though we craved it. Whatever, whatever the connotation of father has for you, you might have a resistance to looking at God or seeing God as father. You might. But if God is the father that Jesus described and Jesus modeled and Jesus pointed to, then that father is the definition of what a father ought to be. As a father, it's my aspiration to be a father like that. Jesus, as he describes describes God the father and he invites his disciples to relate to him like he does, he's saying, this is about a relationship. It's a relationship of safety a relationship of life, a relationship of gifts where God wants to give. He wants to give life, impart life. He's committed to life. He wants to give you dreams and visions and hopes and passions and grace and mercy. God wants to give you these things that fuel and foster your life. But before before you get too much further, you have to understand that he's a father and he sees us as his children. Our father in heaven, Jesus teaches his disciples. And then he says this next word, hallowed be your name. How many of you used the word hallowed in the last 90 days? <laughs> nope. I don't. I, I had to look it up. <laughs> like hallowed. I don't know. I know what it means until you ask me what it means, and then I don't know how to explain it. Hallowed. It's hallowed. Like Halloween? No, not quite. Hallowed. Uh, the, the Greek word is hagiazo. Everybody say hagiazo. Hagiazo. I figured I'd define it for you, make it easy. So it's to make holy, set apart, or pure. You go, that makes way more sense, right? Is that way more clear? Hagiazo, hallowed, to make holy, set apart, or pure. It's funny, the first part of the Lord's Prayer, it's also, it's not like, it's like a paradox. It's like two opposite things at the same time that actually aren't opposite. They work together. Jesus says the first part, our Father in heaven. You relate to God as a father. He gives you access like his children. He has an inheritance for you. He just wants to bless you and give you and, and hold you and, and provide for you. Your, your heavenly father wants a relationship with you like a perfect father. But then the second part says, but don't forget, he is holy, he's righteous, he's pure, he's set apart, he's different. He is the definition of perfection. It's like my boys walking in and seeing the fire trucks. You can bet that I walked in and went, don't touch. They're perfect. They're beautiful. They ought to be respected. Jesus, as he's coaching his disciples, saying, this is how you pray. You pray to a father that is holy. 
You pray to a father that is perfect. You pray to a father that is the definition of righteousness. Even how Alex said it, I had to think about it when he said it, but I went, wow, that's good. The perspective that we should have, God is holy and pure and righteous, and those are the lenses in which he sees us. All of a sudden, I feel really dirty, unqualified, and not given access. I feel disqualified. Jesus is teaching his disciples, you have a heavenly father who is perfect, who wants a relationship with you. I think some of us just need to hear that because when it comes to prayer, we say, God wouldn't want anything to do with me because God knows me like I know me and God knows what I do and God knows what I think about. Therefore, God can do his thing, I can do my thing and I think we're gonna be okay. And that's why most of us, our prayer lives are awful. We're non-existent. Because I think sometimes we even come in and we go, I have to prove something to you, God. I want to use big words and and I want to show you that I'm worthy and I want to earn something from you. It starts with a father who's so madly in love with you that's willing to sacrifice everything. And then at the same time, a God who is holy and righteous and pure. and, and, And you feel the purity when you're in relationship with him. Our father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. It starts with such grace and love as well as reverence. So you might say, what is the purpose of prayer? Is it to ask for stuff? Is it to get what you want? Is it to show up to God when you have a problem? Is it your 911 that's always available, no cell service required? Is that how you see God? I wanted to write it this way. Prayer is not about getting what you want. It's about wanting what you already get from God. Let me read it again. Prayer is not about getting what you want. We don't approach prayer with the mentality of I'm stepping into this so that I might get or receive or, or, or take. Prayer is not about getting what you want. In fact, if you're going to go into this series and you go, I want to learn how to pray so I know how, how to get from God what I want when I want it, you're going to be so disappointed in this whole series. Prayer changes your heart. It changes your posture. It changes how you relate to God. Prayer is not about getting what you want. It's about wanting. It's about a desire. It's about cultivating something deep inside of you. It's about wanting what you already get from God. We're all going to go, what's that? What do we already get from God? Mind blower, himself. Himself. We just celebrated this on Easter last week. This is what we celebrate when we read the Bible. This is what we celebrate when we look at the cross. This is what we celebrate when Jesus defeated death. This is what we celebrate. God, in his goodness, as a loving, holy, perfect, righteous father, said, I want access to my children. I want them to have access to me, that even though I'm righteous and holy and and I demand it, I'm also a loving father. So God created a way for us to be with him, and it came through the person of Jesus. Jesus' blood on the cross washed us clean so that we're actually able to approach God from a righteous perspective because our sins are already paid for and atoned for by him. Here's what God is after, and here's what prayer gets you is oneness with God. If that is your goal, and if that is your desire when it comes to prayer, you will never leave unsatisfied. So why pray? To be in relationship with God. That's it. Amen. You can leave. Thanks for coming. Glad you all are here. I was talking to Brian last night. We were praying about today and a couple other things. And, and he, he goes, how can I pray for you for tomorrow? I went, the message is so simple. I mean, it's just, this is who God is. This is what prayer is. Go do that thing. So this is kind of, this is it. This is prayer. Let me ask this, right? I'm, I'm having fun with you. Why don't we do this? Why don't we pray? Why don't we sit with God? Why do we often come to him when we need something, but we don't often come to him when we don't? Why? I think we are so stinking busy. 
I think we like it that way. I think we like staying busy because we don't have to, to, to sit long enough to allow things to catch up. Maybe it's emotions. Maybe it's brokenness. Maybe it's sin. Maybe it's a sense of worth that, that we feel like we get when we're busy and when we're doing stuff, but when we actually slow down and we actually stop, uh, I, I start feeling stuff and thinking stuff that I don't have time to when I'm moving. I think one of the biggest barriers to us actually being a praying church or walking with Jesus through prayer is the amount of stuff we try to cram in to a very short amount of time. And we use prayer as an add-in and we say, God, I need help. Can you come in right now, please? The best times that I hear from God are when I'm sitting on a bucket in the woods or when I'm in a room by myself listening to music. Do you know what I'm doing in both of those situations? I'll show you. Right here. Can you still see me? Okay, good. This is it. This is the posture. I hear from God when I do this. When I just sit, wait, listen, talk, share my heart. I'm always amazed that when I walk away from a, a time or a setting or a season like this, when God speaks and I hear and it changes everything. I'm not just saying that. I'm not, I'm not trying to make that up or over glorify something. I'm serious. When I sit and I'm calm, I hear God. It's probably why Psalm 4610, Alex read it earlier. It's that passage, be still and know that I am God. I think when we're actually still, when we actually sit, when we actually rest, we experience God. Like it, it becomes a knowledge. Like I know, I know you. I know what to expect from you. I know what to expect from our time together. Be still and know that I am God. But then this next part, we often don't read this next part, but I think it's so significant. It says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Why? Isn't it funny that when we sit and are still with God, that we encounter God and it leads us to a place of praise of God? Sometimes even in worship, like it's funny, even as a team, we go, are people into worship today? Are they not into worship today? Are we, what, what, what can we do? How can we stir this environment? I think if we just sit in the presence of God, it naturally drives us into a place of worship. Because you start understanding how great he is, how mighty he is, how merciful he is, how all-powerful he is, how loving he is, and how available he is. All he wants is time with us. And when we get time with him, we walk away and we go, that just changed everything. I just had an interaction. I had an experience, this encounter with the living God. Prayer is not about getting what you want. It's about wanting what you already get from God, which is himself. So how do you need to pause this week? How do you need to sit? What do you need to say no to? What, what area of your life, what part of your schedule, what timeline can you carve out where you actually just sit down, maybe you turn on music, maybe you go for a walk in the woods, maybe you get out somewhere where it can be just you and God, uninterrupted time that you could actually create space for God to speak, for you to listen, for you to do that in a way that, that actually leads to change. You're going to have a bunch of opportunities even just over the next six weeks. We have a number of different themes each week for prayers. We track through the Lord's Prayer. Something I'd love for you to put on your calendar, it's April 25th. It's next week, Tuesday. Uh, we have a prayer night here at Frontline, and the theme or topic of that night is healing. Some of you have things that you're carrying. Maybe it's with your body. Maybe it's with your mind. Maybe... Maybe it's a broken relationship, cancer, whatever it is you got, healing is what I need. Why don't you come? Next week, Tuesday, I think it's 7 o'clock. We have a prayer team that's here. They're going to be in the back. 
Uh, they're always right here in the middle. You, you can also access them online. It's frontlinejr.com slash prayer. Uh, you have so many different opportunities to pray here or to ask for prayer here. It is the number one focus. But, but here's why it is the number one focus for us. Prayer is all about the access that we have to God. Jesus made that possible for us on the cross. It's what we just celebrated last week. Jesus went to the cross knowing full well that there was a separation and a division between God, the perfect, righteous, holy God, and us. And there was nothing we could do to overcome that, nothing we could do to fix that. Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood, died an awful death so that we might have access to God in an amazing way. It's about salvation when we give our lives to him, but then it's about walking with him in discipleship. Prayer is an integral piece of discipleship. Crucial. Vital. I don't even think it's possible to walk with Jesus apart from prayer and time with him. So what do you need to do to carve out time, space? What do you need to do to create a pause in your life? I can't answer that one for you. I can tell you for me, uh, we're, we're having fun right now just as we close. I think the band's going to come up here in a second. Uh, as we close, what Shannon and I are doing right now is we're teaching our boys how to pray. And uh, it's really fun, especially like meal time. So Jordan, we call him Jordy. Uh, he's only one years old, but he, he kind of, it's like he catches up and we'll go, okay, we're going to pray. And Judah goes like this. I go like this. Shannon goes like this. And then we all kind of just stare at Jordy like, come on, kid. It's like, and he just sits there and like reaches down, grabs one more strawberry. I mean, it's this big... You know, it's like a hostage negotiation. We're going, no, we're ready. And watching him fold his hands, we pray before bed. And when I hear the prayers of my kids, I'm, I'm just reminded of how simple this needs to be. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't try to use big words and string it out and try to impress God or other people. Prayer is just the opportunity for us to connect with him like that loving father that he is. As Shannon and I are teaching our boys how to pray, I'm learning how to pray. Been a follower of Jesus for a long time. I'm still learning how to pray. Learning how to just step in and sit in his presence and enjoy time with him. This way of praying, it's also like adoration. It's called adoration. How, how do you just give God glory and praise and worship and affirmation and celebration all these things that God is that, that we see when we sit. We're just overwhelmed. Like, this is who you are? And you love me? You care about me? You want to hear the things that are heavy on my heart? God, you actually want time with me? Here's what I love about you. I mean, this is how my prayer life is going recently. God, I, I just love your grace. I know what I deserve, and I know you don't give me that. Thank you for just who you are. God, thanks for my family. Thanks for my wife, Shannon. She's a gift I didn't earn, but I'll take. Thank you for my boys, my brother, parents. I mean, it's like you just you keep going, going, going. God, you've just given me and blessed me. And then... Then you drive to work and you go, look at the nature and look at the sunset and look at the beach, God, and look at the woods and the animals. And it's just, yeah, it's so easy to pray. You just go, you're just awesome. That's, that's all I think we should focus on, even for now or even for this week. God, this is just what I think about you. You're just incredible. So we have these things. We're trying to make it easy for you. I think the easiest spot to do this, uh, believe it or not, is in your car. We have these like little mirror hanger things. Grab one on your way out. They're over at the next steps area right out here. Uh, hang it on your mirror, put it in your car. Today's prompt and this prompt all week, it's so easy. It's just tell God what you love about him. That's it. So when you're in your car, maybe you're driving by yourself, just use it as time, just you and God. If you're taking kids to school in the morning, 
uh, before you drop them off, just sit in the parking lot for an extra minute or two or three or four. And just sit. Tell God what you love about them. Do it as a family. Do it before mealtime. Do it before you go to bed. Do it when you wake up in the morning. Hey, just start. God, here, here's what I think about you. I'm just blown away by you. The way that you love us, care for us, protect us. You are incredible and you are worthy of being worshiped. So that's how we're going to respond. We're just going to respond in worship because our God's amazing because he loves us, he cared for us, died for us on the cross to give us access to do what we're going to do. So here's what I want to ask you to do, whether you're at home, whether you're in the room, would you just stand up? I'd love to just pray for us as we close and then we're just going to worship the God that we've just been talking about for the last few minutes. Sound good? Great. Let's pray together. God, we just come before you right now. We're just overwhelmed by who you are. God, you're so big, you're so mighty, you're so holy, you're so perfect, you're pure, you're set apart. God, you're sitting on the throne right now. There's, there's tens of thousands of angels all surrounding you, just worshiping you, crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And you want us. You want to hear from us. There's nothing that we've done that has separated us from you permanently. You, you just keep giving us this invitation over and over and over. Come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. So, God, we just give you awe and wonder. We just give you praise today and celebration. God, I, I just pray that as we worship here, as we close out even this time this morning, that you would receive our worship for who you are. We love you. We're grateful for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said together, amen. Amen. Well, we're actually going to do a new song this morning, and you might have heard it, but if you didn't, that's okay. Um, part of the chorus says, let every burning heart be holy ground. And so just as we look at this prayer series over the next couple weeks, what I hope and what I pray for all of us is that we have a growing, just burning desire in our hearts to seek the face of God. And so if you don't know this song, that's all right. Take this time to just offer up a prayer of adoration to the Lord. And as you catch on, feel free to join in as we sing together.
Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope you guys are going to have an awesome week. I hope God changes something in your prayer life this week. It really does. I hope you create some time just to open up, just to spend with him, to give him glory and praise and worship for who he is, for what he's done. But I also pray that you hear him. Pray that he would speak to something. Maybe that's unresolved in your life right now, something you're waiting on, something that you really, truly desire from him. I hope he does that. Uh, quick invitation to you is we have a prayer team. They're right in the back. All you got to do is stop. You don't have to give them a lot of details. Just say, would you just pray for me? I just want to hear from God. Let them pray for you. Same thing online, frontlinechair.com slash prayer. Uh, maybe, maybe you want to pray. You want to be a part of that for other people. Just stop at the prayer wall, s- submit a request online, do the same thing. Don't miss an opportunity to engage with God in prayer over these next six weeks. Uh, it could change everything in your life. Uh, and I'm living proof of that. So as we leave, one thing we love to do uh, is close with a benediction here at Frontline. If you don't know what that means, it just means blessing. And so today, I, I just wanted to read the Lord's prayer over us one more time. So I, I'll just ask, you, you know, wherever you're at, if you want to hold your hands like this, just in a posture of reception, uh, just to receive whatever it is that God has for you today before you head out. Let me read this prayer one last time, and then uh, we'll head out. So Jesus said to his disciples, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We love you guys. We hope we'll see you next week for part two of Lord Teach Us to Pray. Love you.